I'd like to call to order the Monday, July 11th regular meeting. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance and an invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'm going to handle this a little bit differently tonight. So if you'll all bear with me, um, I'd like us to take a moment of silence to honor the policemen uh, that were killed in Dallas. I believe there were three individuals. So if you'll just take that moment, please. Thank you. And I'm handling the prayer a little bit differently tonight. Um, I struggled with the prayer for tonight. I worked while I was in California visiting my daughter and her husband, uh, and I toiled and toiled and toiled. So I came home, and today about 2 o'clock, I called my pastor. I said, Pastor, I am having a difficult time. After reading the papers and hearing everybody's response, it was pretty bad. So I hope I cannot have a tear during this because I think it's very important. But this is a prayer for the healing of the soul of our nation. All of mankind shares one father. We share the same blood. It is because of this truth we can say that all lives matter, from the young men who perished to the officers which were gunned down. Every human life of every color, age, and economic background matters to God, and they matter to us. We are truly all brothers and sisters of mankind, and God has allowed us to be joined together in our communities. In times like this, we must all pull together and to declare God's peace, love, and forgiveness into our communities and see the power of fear pushed back. Today, we are all sensitive to the raw emotions that are in our atmosphere. In honor of all that we represent, we agree in prayer that God in heaven above will release healing, comfort, and restoration into the hearts of our citizens. So we ask for God to reveal to us new wisdom and ideas, which unite us as one, causing all to prosper as a community, which demonstrates respect and value of all our lives. In his name, amen. Mayor, thank you. That was very nice. You always thank us. No one ever thanks you. Thank you. My, oh, my microphone's on. Okay. Well, we are not all here tonight, and so uh, Wally Campbell will not be with us, so we need a motion to excuse her, Marie. So could I have a motion and a second to excuse Councilman Wally Campbell? So moved. Second. I heard a motion by Council, uh, Vice Mayor Laura Town and a second by uh, Councilman Pazillo, roll call vote, please. Aye. Councilmember Osborne? Aye. Councilmember Pazillo? Aye. Councilmember Stipp? Aye. Councilmember Homan? Aye. Mayor Lord? Aye. Passes 6 0. Wonderful. Now is the time for citizens who would like to address the City Council on any non agenda item. Are there any speaker cards for non agenda? All right, thank you. Then let's go on to the consent agenda. Will the city clerks please read consent agenda item 6.1 through 6.5 by title only. Item 6.1, approved draft minutes of a special meeting held on June 20th, 2016, and a regular meeting held on June 27, 2016 with the following Scrivener's correction. Item 7.1, use, use permit amendment for Compass Church. Under the motion, item C currently states in the minutes, this amendment shall expire six months after the completion of the Van Buren Street Roadway Project, but not later than December 31st, 2018, unless otherwise extended by city council action. Otherwise, the previous restrictions prohibiting vehicular access on North 161st Avenue shall be reinstated. The corrected information should say, or the later of December 31st, 2018, instead of, but not later than. Item 6.2, approve the map of dedication for Sedea Face 
3, North La Maromona Drive and North Sedea Parkway, subject to stipulations. Item 6.3, rescind the July 9, 2007, approval of the Sedea Parcel 3C final plat in its entirety and approve the final plat for Sedea Parcel 3C subject to stipulations. Item 6.4, approve the final plat for Canamia Pod 5 subject to stipulations. Item 6.5, ratify an intergovernmental agreement between Maricopa County Sheriff's Office and Goodyear Police Department for the use of Arizona Automated Fingerprint Identification System Full Access System Terminal Site. Thank you very much. Uh, does anyone from the audience wish to remove an item from consent agenda? And I do have one card. So I'd like to um, invite Jennifer Barber to the microphone. Jennifer, and while you're there, it's nice to see you. Uh, just to remind you um, that um, there, each speaker is limited to three minutes. The yellow light and buzzer will let you know we have 30 seconds left to speak. And before you begin to speak, identify yourself clearly by stating for the record your name and address. The council will listen to your comments and may take any of the following uh, issue, uh, uh, procedures. Respond to criticism, request that staff investigate and report on the matter, matter, request that the matter be scheduled on future agenda. So you're now on. Thank you, Mem uh, thank you, Mayor and members of the council. Can you Thanks. speak just a little bit louder? Yes. Since I let, since you left, I wear hearing aids now, okay. so I couldn't All quite right. make out what you said. Uh, good evening, Mayor and members of the council. My name is Jennifer Barber, 18295 West Sweet Acacia Drive, and I live in Australia. Uh, this evening, I respectfully request that you remove consent agenda item 6.4 regarding Cantamia and open it up for public comment. And I don't know if I make comments now or if I wait. You can make comments now. Okay. Um, the reason I'm asking this tonight is because I know that you all support police and fire. I know that you're all passionate about those services in our community just as much as I am and as many of our residents are. So I'm not here to criticize that at all. What I'm asking is how you plan to support the residents who live south of the Ray Road alignment um, by continuing to approve rooftops when your response times to the area do not meet the eight minute threshold 58% of the time and when rooftops, the threshold for rooftops has already been exceeded, I believe it's almost been a couple of years now. I know that you have a study underway for a new fire station and I thank you, I appreciate that. Um, my question though is can you please explain to the people if you do vote yes on this tonight, why? I, I feel like I'm missing something here, and I'm not exactly sure what I'm missing. To me, it looks black and white. Response times, rooftops, your fire chief has talked to you four times about this. So if you could just explain it to the community, I'd really, really appreciate it. I want to feel good about the decisions you're making. I know that you all work really, really hard, but I think that Estrella residents deserve the same level of service that's being provided in the other parts of the community. So thank you for your service. I appreciate it. I know it's not an easy job, but I thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Uh, does council wish to remove any item from the consent agenda? Yes. I, Councilman uh, Osborne? Yes, I was going to ask, I was going to, ask to remove 6.4, please. OK. All right, so let's go ahead then. Um, before, so let's make a motion, first of all, on that. Do I hear a motion to remove 6.4? So moved. Second. All right. Can we do a roll call? Councilmember Osborne? Aye. Councilmember Pazillo? Aye. Councilmember Stipp? Aye. Councilmember Homan? Aye. Vice Mayor Lord Tano? Aye. Mayor Lord? Aye. Pass the 6 0. So let's go ahead and vote on 6.1, 6.2, 6.3, and 6.5. So I do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. I heard a motion from Councilman Stiff and a second from Councilman Pazillo. Uh, uh, any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Councilmember Pazillo? Aye. Councilmember Stipp? Aye. Councilmember Homan? Aye. Vice Mayor Loritano? Aye. Councilmember Osborne? Aye. Mayor Lord? Aye. Passes 6 0. Thank you so much. So we have pulled that. Um, little, little help with this. So we've pulled it, and we go, do we want to do a presentation now, or how do we want to handle that? That's up to you, Mary, if you'd like a presentation. Well, let me ask the council. I would like a presentation. All right. 
shaking hands. All right, could we please have a presentation on 6.4, please? All right, thank you, Mayor, members of the council. Um, Cantamia Pod 5 is located within phase two of Cantamia. Um, it's the red outline pod. Um, the pre pod for the phase, for phases two and three, was approved in December of 2014. Um, the master, just recently we saw a master plat that also had phases two and three uh, that were approved in November of 2015. There are 43.88 acres um, on the on pod five, and it, that includes 159 lots. I don't have very much else to present uh, other than that. All right. That's very good. So let's just turn it over to council discussion. Yes. <clears throat> Councilman Pazillo. Mine's probably more of a legal question for the city attorney. Can, can you, for the general public, and educate me in this area as well, what is the process once it's zoned, once it's preliminary platted, and then the final plat, as far as what council can or can't do throughout those processes. Madam um, Mayor, members of the council, as you know, zoning is the point where you exercise your police powers to decide which land use is appropriate for a given area and whether or not there's available services to that area on, on behalf of the city. Uh, so that's at the, the zoning. Then you move into a preliminary plat where you, you basically you're subdividing the land and uh, establishing circulation patterns and engineering type work that's a preliminary plat a final plat generally is a, an administrative second uh, double check uh, that everything that was established as an obligation to the developer in the preliminary plat has been complied with to finalize the subdivision of the land so it, it, as you're sitting as a legislative body it's more like an administrative act on the on the part of the council in this case you're basically just double checking compliance with the obligations uh, imposed in the preliminary plat, if that makes sense. I probably didn't explain it very well, but uh, it's a second review uh, on the obligations that were in the preliminary plat. As long as the developer's in compliance with the preliminary plat, uh, council should move forward with, with the final plat, if that makes sense. And, and that's my follow-up question, Mayor, is are they in compliance with the preliminary plat? And that's gonna be a, a question for, okay. for the planner that's been assigned to the case. Yes, they have been in compliance with, with the preliminary plat. Any other questions? Councilman Lord, I think he's just. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I, I'm just for the clarification. So legally, from our perspective sitting up here, and, and that's why I'm asking the attorney, if they're in compliance with the preliminary plat, then what rationale other than being legal would we have to refuse the final plat and again i i'm no lawyer i'm not an expert in this area that's why i'm very pointing on the questions that i'm asking you and now you're asking me for legal advice which my i, I should be providing you in an executive session uh but you your role as a council member is looking at the obligations that were imposed on the developer with the preliminary plat going down that checklist and making sure that those obligations, those stipulations have been complied with and then exercising uh, your vote in, in this kind of quasi-administrative role at this point, if that makes sense. If you need further legal advice, I would probably uh, recommend we go into executive session. Yeah, I'll, turn, yeah, I'll, I'll yield. Well, if I can just Councilman paraphrase, Stiff. if I may, just paraphrase. The, um, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> well, that makes me feel better. <laughs> I mean, it is yeah, like totally off the tracks. I'm in a different time zone all of a sudden. Um, 
if the stipulations are as they are, and it meets the preliminary plat, and this is more of administrative action, that really explains why this is a consent agenda item as opposed to a public hearing item. Is that correct? That's correct. And I think it would probably also uh, offer that you should you shouldn't necessarily be imposing additional stipulations at the, this point that were not uh, imposed at the preliminary plat, if that makes sense. So, yes. Mayor, I'd actually like to hear from Councilmember Osborne who has to pull this thing. Uh, well, can I, I actually recognize okay. the Vice Mayor Lortano first, okay? I have a comment, but first I have a question for the city manager. Um, where are we? I know about two weeks ago last time we were here, you gave us an update on what the fire service, because obviously this is a concern. So if you could give a general update, obviously I know there's some discussions and we can't violate legal privilege, but could you give an update to give some reassurance on where we're at? Um, yes, uh, Mayor, Vice Mayor. Uh, a couple of things. So the fire service agreement, or excuse me, the fire station lo uh, location study is now, uh, we're at a point now where we have reviewed I think I'm going, there we are, uh, last Friday, July 8th. So we uh, believe at this point the study is to be concluded in October. Now let me explain what that is uh, going to give us. So in October, we will have a review of all the existing fire location sites. We have a, a few others within the community. Are those the right locations right now? Um, and going forward, um, we have one in West Goodyear. We have one up in Sedea. We also have one up in Estrella a, a Mountain, um, which is over by the Rainbow Valley area. So it will look at locations of those sites as well as existing fire, um, uh, fire um, facilities. And then from that, we will know, are we in the right place to be able to pro provide the best service um, from those locations? Secondarily, it will come up with a prioritization or recommended prioritization as far as where the next stations go. So it'll help out in our planning to make sure that uh, we are responding where the greatest needs are. Um, so all of that will, is to be uh, completed in October of this year. So moving uh, uh, in concert with that, we continue to work with Newland communities as well as AV homes. Discussions are ongoing. There's a spirit of cooperation. We are working with them. Obviously, it's not liberty to talk about where we're at in um, specific negotiations, but I would tell you there's an interest on the part of Newland Communities, Cantamia AV Homes in this case, as well as the city um, to uh, really get this concluded as far as what different participation levels are. Uh, so that will be concluding about the same time as the study is completed because we want to make sure we're putting, uh, in Australia, for example, want to make sure we're pu putting the um, uh, fire facility in the right location, the fire station, uh, the best location to take care of those areas south of Ray Road. You have another question, Vice Mayor? I have a brief statement, Should I? Can I yeah, say that ahead. now? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to thank Ms. Barber for coming forward, and I want to thank the city manager for, and the staff for all the hard work on this area. Um, for those of you who don't know, I live up in Australia with my two children and my grand, my, their grandparents, my parents, um, who are in their late 70s, and my dad has heart issues. Um, there was a fire up there, and I understand why people are scared, because I had to make the call at 2.30 in the morning. The house burning was probably from here to the wall from my parents' house. My husband was one of the first people who ran over there, and I was one of the first people who actually called 911. Um, it was very scary. Um, that's one reason I've also talked about some of the, the brush and, and everything. And, and our fire department did a dynamite job. Um, so I don't want to go too off track. But I, I want people to know that that is something that, you know, that was really scary. You know, you hear about these fires in California. You hear how they catch. And you see that. And that is a very scary moment to be there um, when you we have older parents right there, too, and children. Um, I know this is coming, and I think everyone in this council, I think Ms. Barber said it very well, everyone in this council knows this is an issue. I voted not to decrease the food sales tax because I know we're going to need the funding for this. Um, I know there's more rooftops. Administratively, there's some legal issues. I, I don't think the right move is to deny the plat because obviously legally, as Council Member Pazillo discussed, um, there's some, some issues with that, and I, I don't think... Um, 
putting up the roadblocks when we have the spirit of cooperation. If we didn't have that spirit of cooperation, if I didn't feel that it was truly and honestly um, good faith, fair dealing with Newland and with AV Homes and with the city, you would hear a whole different, I, I would be yelling and screaming. But I truly think and I truly believe that there is a solution and all parties are honestly and fairly looking for that solution. And I felt that way from day one. Or like I said, those that remember when I was on planning and zoning and I felt there were some issues, it's not public safety, it was a supermarket. I felt that we weren't moving appropriately. I did vote against those plats at that time because I didn't feel that we had that spirit of cooperation at that time. That was also an educational process for me because I also learned that in order to build these services, we have to get two things. And this is something I've really learned. Density is one. So we have to get the density because when we look at our, our property um, tax um, levies, they're half of what they were before the Great, Depre Great Recession. And so I, I did learn a lot. And then to get the, the business either for the tax incomes, we need the density. So we are playing catch up. And it is going to cost some, some money. And it's going to be some hard work. But I think we are all on the same page, and I think everybody wants, not just for Estrella, I think that's what's really important, that for the whole city, that we have public safety, both police, and that we have fire for the whole city in a very holistic approach. And I'm pleased we're doing the study, because as we've redone agreements with 16 divisions in West Goodyear, we've redone the mall, you know, to look at those agreements as we've come forward, as, as times have changed. Um, we're not in that growth pattern. So I do like the fact that we're looking at a holistic approach. We have our community partners. We are going forward, and we will have a solution fairly shortly. And just so people know, we've talked about other solutions, because I brought up two incidences in some of the work sessions that I personally saw that I had some concerns about, where I saw other trucks up in Estrella. Um, and we talked about issues with redundancy and bringing other crews up there and what we can do. So I think all of that is something that's going to be discussed um, I wish I had the answer today, and I wish we could solve it today. But I think we have to ha let the process work, and it's not going to be delayed. So I will be voting for that. Thank you. Councilman Osborne. Thank you. Well, um, I, I appreciate the responses that uh, some of the council members have already given and management. I felt that this was an item that should not have been on consent just because of the concern that people have had up in Australia. And so I wanted there to be reassurance given again and, and the, um, the message of being that we are considering everything that is going on up there. And, and I do believe that we have a developer that is, is readily willing and able and wanting to participate in agreement with us. Um, they're going to be there for a very, very long time. I also believe that we always balance development and public safety, and I know we've hit a point of growth within our city that, um, especially within two years, you know, it's not like this house is going to be up tomorrow in, in many of these places, but in two years, we certainly will see a different landscape. And so those concerns are valid concerns, but it's something that we are um, readily looking at. I also think that... Um, we are open to other ideas. I know that it's been discussed. I think um, Vice Mayor Laura Tano said it well. You know, we have um, been open ears and ready to say, okay, give us some other alternatives if there are. And, and so I, I want to reassure not only the people in Australia, but there's also been concern of the people um, far west uh, in, in Goodyear of how we're all going to balance it. And... Um, and we're going to have to be creative sometimes. And, but we're also going to have to do it right. And so um, we're, in, we're in a world that we want answers now. And we don't have them right now. But it's also not like that house is going to be built tomorrow. So um, it's not that we have a ton of time. But we have a little time to get all of our ducks in a row. And to make it work properly. And, and I... I Myself, I will speak for myself, will sit there and say, safety comes first. And if you can come to me with other creative ideas 
that doesn't mean, you know, a $4 million station and a ladder truck and all that, but it's a substation or it's something else, but it's, it's what we're doing as these things go forward. I'm open to it. So, you know, I'm glad that, uh, you know, I was asking, I was going to ask for it to come off consent. I'm glad that Ms. Barber asked for it because she is concerned. There's concern. And so that needs to be addressed. And consent wasn't where it should be. But, you know, everybody, you know, had, and I'm, Sherilyn, I'm sure you have the same thoughts. I'll, you know, if you want to add to it. But we all are. We all are, are, you know, wanting to make sure our citizens are safe first. So thank you for doing your work. <laughs> thank you. Sherilyn Holman. Um, thank you. Uh, and thank you for that, Joanne. And that is, you know, I, I think that I've been consistent through, through my time here on the council, that the safety of our citizens is always going to come first. It has to. And, um, but there are procedures, and uh, th this developer has gone through the process, and we're at the point right now where um, we really don't have a reason not to approve this in my opinion, but that doesn't mean there isn't value to this discussion because we all need to understand that we need to be on the same page and to be proactive in discussing our options and discussing how we want to move forward as, as we go on with similar um, items. So um, I too say, Ms. Barber, thank you for, for coming forward. It's a legitimate concern, no argument. And uh, I, I think and thank my peers for being open to the discussion and uh, contributing very valuable thoughts. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, Councilman uh, Pazillo. Uh, there's not too much to add to that except this process of holistically looking at our public safety because I don't know if there's anybody on this council that doesn't have public safety as number one of their priorities. But the same token, this process has been going on for a while, and I'm hoping, as a city manager, as indicated, it'll come to a close soon. But a couple questions I would hope would be in the study, because I think it's important when we look at public safety, we look at it holistically. All of us on this council are all elected to represent the city as a whole. So I want to make sure that whatever the study comes back, we're looking at the entire city and how service is being impacted entirely. So what I'm asking is, what I'm hoping is that by our individual uh, sites that we have today, our fire stations, I believe there's what, six of them? Seven of them count in Mobile? All right. If we can get a GPS mapping of the city of Goodyear, of areas that are covered within five minutes, another one that shows by the, by the, by the station, areas that are covered within six minutes, areas that are covered within seven minutes, and possibly within eight. And what I'd like also to ask is if we can, within those areas or outside that circle of response time, uh, the population that's within that area. And what I'm getting at is, again, to address this problem holistically, it's important to see how we rank for the entire city on calls throughout the city, um, not just on one area. So this, I think, will be helpful by doing the GPS and how those calls are related within. As I recall, and again, it's been a long time ago when I was doing my master's in stats, that we have a lot of areas within the city that probably don't fall within this five, six minutes, seven minute response time. But I'm not sure what the population counts are within there as well. So again, I think that would be very helpful. I know it would be helpful to me. I would assume helpful to the others on this council when it comes time to plot and fire stations where those calls and where those, uh, what's the term I'm thinking of, where those shortfalls are and delivery of service. Thank you. Councilman Stiff. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I have a hard time calling you Miss Barber. Um, but thank you uh, for, for coming forward tonight. To answer a couple of the questions that were raised this evening, um, one is why are we approving this tonight? Um, I think that answer uh, is pretty clear from, from the attorney is there's really no re real legal reason why we are not going to, uh, to approve this. But I think from a practical standpoint, we also have to look at um, what, what information we are getting. And I do want to correct one statement that, that was made. 
the fire chief has come before us not saying that we are exceeding those areas in there, but has come before us numbers of a number of times telling us that we do not meet all of the current criteria that he is using to determine whether we need a fire station or not. And while we're meeting two or one or, th uh, or three of the four, um, I think that probably is where the real question lies. And I think that's why we're having this study. Um, we discussed this um, in February, I believe. I was out of town, uh, had to, to call in uh, for that particular meeting. But the issue um, for me all along has been um, what criteria are we actually using to determine the fire station location or um, the th triggers and thresholds for these fire stations. Um, it is no secret that I have been opposed to creating the study because we already know the answer um, on a number of occasions. However, we are doing the study and now we'll wait for that to come through. I am very appreciative and hopeful that the October uh, timeframe for this is something that is achievable. Um, it should be because we have a tremendous amount of information um, here within the city that quite frankly, I think we should be able to provide that by October without any, without any, any issue whatsoever. Um, so we are taking steps to move forward. Um, the preliminary plat for this has already been approved. There's been no substantive changes to it. So we in fact um, are almost obligated to approve it tonight. Um, which again, which is why it's on the consent agenda. It does not relieve us of our obligation to provide public safety for the entire city. Um, I have said a number of times, both on this dais and off this dais, that we are going to we are asking a question that is going to come back with a much bigger number than just one. Um, and what are we going to do then? Um, and the reason that I'm this confident is this is what I do for a living, and I know what the answers are. Um, so we'll wait to get to get the information back, and then we'll have much harder decisions than whether to approve this plat, but what are we gonna do uh, regarding public safety for our community? Um, as everybody's pointed out, it is a matter of balance. It's a matter of balance. Do we put all of our eggs in, in growing our fire department? Do we put all of our eggs in growing our police department? Um, or do we put a few eggs in the parks department, a few eggs in the police department, a few eggs in the fire department, and a few eggs in everything else that the city does? Um, and I think that becomes our greatest challenge and the, the challenges that we are going to face as a council um, going into the future. So the only request that I would make tonight, um, in addition to being curious what Council Member Pazillo um, suggested, is once the uh, contract has been, has been awarded and we've, uh, we've moved forward, I would like to know who's doing the work. Um, for me personally, um, given the strain that the existing uh, triggers and thresholds have put on this discussion and the way we've used it. Um, I personally intend to make sure that uh, the work that's being done is being done um, with the best interests uh, in its totality and to ensure for the public's benefit that we have not um, gone astray or tried to fit a round peg into a square hole just because that's what we need to do for our community. Um, and that's my personal assurance as, as, the, as the council member. But um, so knowing who's doing the work, what kind of reputation they have in the industry is gonna be very, um, very important um, for me and then for us, I think, going forward. Any second comments? All right, uh, council, I really appreciate your discussion tonight. Um, you know, when I first started on this council and we had to do a study, every time a study came out, I said, oh, another study. But in this case, uh, I think it takes away the statement, well, I already know what our city needs. Uh, we'll see what it says, but I already know. Well, I don't think we already know. I don't think we always already know. And I think a study takes out the emotion that happens for the people that feel like, uh, that we're doing them a disservice or the people that feel like they don't want to see another fire station built in our city at this time. So there's lots of different opinions when you have 77,777 people in your city. Um, and so we have to, we have to think of it, uh, you know, we have to think of the city and it's total. 
and sometimes that's very difficult for us sitting here, sitting with your group at home and talking to your husband or with your coffee group or anything. Uh, we have a tendency on these things to make a lot of assumptions. Somebody gave us a sentence that we hang on to and say, well, I heard this, and that's why I know this is right. Um, a, a fire happening, that's, that's a real serious one. Uh, but again, um, don't want any fires, don't want anybody to be killed, I don't, you know, I certainly. Uh, but I have a lot of confidence in our fire department, I will tell you that. And I have a lot of confidence in our city and the way it's managed. Uh, but we just have to have verification before we go out and do cost items like this and that they're right. There's nothing worse than us building something and then all of a sudden it comes back and says, boy, I don't know what they, how they made that decision. Well, in this case, it, I have confidence that won't happen. So that's my comment. So uh, do we have a motion and a second to pass this uh, 6.4? I can do that. Yeah. But I need to have a new one, right? Or take, yeah. I need a motion. So, so moved. Okay, I'll I'm going to take the motion from Councilman Holman and a, a second from Vice Mayor uh, Laura Tano. So roll call vote, please. Aye. 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 All right, thank you very much. Let's go on to the business. Um, so we're going to go to 7.1. I want to remind council to refrain from asking questions until staff presentations are complete and there's a motion on the table. Uh, the first item is a public hearing to consider the use permit from John, for John Vianney Catholic School. So I'm going to open the public hearing, and Alex Latinsky will be giving the presentation. Thank you, Mayor, members of Council. Um, St. John Vianney Catholic School and Church um, has made the request to build a new multi-purpose facility at their existing site located at the east end of Goodyear on Central Avenue and Loma Linda Boulevard, um, right next to Loma Linda Park. Um, the property is currently zoned multifamily 24, MF 24. Um, it was built in 1958 before, um, actually it was built with uh, multifamily zoning. There's a lot of different history there. Um, so currently it is legally non-conforming um, to the, the zoning. Um, in order to legally conform with that zone, or legally conform and construct a new building on the site, uh, the zoning does need to be in conformance. Uh, as you can see on this conceptual site plan, the location of the building is on the western portion of the site where an existing play field um, currently lies. The new two-story facility will include a gymnasium and 10 new classrooms. Uh, let's show you some elevations. A traffic study was reviewed and approved by the engineering department. Um, the traffic pattern will be maintained as is with the pickup and drop off remaining on the south end of the site. No residents were um, in attendance at the na neighborhood meeting that was held on May 24th. Uh, the public hearing notifications were satisfied. On June, June 15th, the Planning and Zoning Commission recommended approval of the request. Um, and I'm available for any questions. Thank you, Alex. Uh, would anybody in the audience like to speak? Are there any speaker cards? I'm no, not getting any, so no one? Okay. So I'm going to close the public hearing. And could I have a motion a second to approve the special use permit to facilitate the development of the new multi-purpose building on the existing St. John Vianney Catholic School campus subject to stipulations? Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. I heard a motion by Councilman Stiff and a second by Councilman Holman. Open for council discussion. Councilman Stiff. Mayor, the uh, St. John Vianney has been such a great uh, longtime partner of the of the city, and um, while I'm, I'm disappointed to a certain degree that we weren't able to put together the master plan for the Loma Linda Park and you know take it from there, I, I think the the resolution uh, is going to be quite satisfactory for the community as, as a whole, which is really positive. So I am very happy to support um, the. Uh, the, the request tonight and and uh, get them into conformance and plow forward. So, Godspeed. Councilman Holman? 
Well, I too would uh, would support this motion. I I, I echo Bill's uh, uh, comments about the partnership between St. John Vianney and the City of Goodyear. I've kind of watched it um, as uh, the Chamber had a great partnership with St. John Vianney too um, early on, uh, and probably many sitting here do know and some don't. Saint, uh, the Billy Moore days was was a, was at St. John Vianney for a very long time until they built the new church. Darn that new church! Um, <laughs> uh, as as a uh, I am a part of the congregation of St. John Vianney. Um, we serve a tremendous number of families. Uh, it is um, the school was a, a great addition and and much needed in our community at the time. Uh, and they have built, the new church was built, and um, they use the grounds that they have wisely. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm really glad and hope to see more of St. John Vianney in uh, the, the work that we do uh, in cooperation with the city, and I will not stop nagging. <laughs> Every week. Uh, so um, I, I am very excited to see this as the next step in our growth. Council of Azillo. I just echo the comments already up here. You've been a great partner, and I wish you much success in your venture. Council Osborne. Just wanted to say congratulations and, on the growth, and we're so happy that you're part of our city. Thanks. Vice Mayor Loretano. Not much left to say. Thank you very much. Um, it will be great to see that area just really blossom, and the addition is just wonderful. And thank you for being such a wonderful partner. Well, then, let's take care of this with all these positive comments. So uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you very much. So we'll go on to 7.2. Is a public hearing to consider an amendment to the Goodyear Plan Regional Center Planned Area Development for the Goodyear Assisted Living Resident. Uh, open the public hearing. Steve Karechi, Planner 3, to present. Steve? Thank you, Mayor, Council Members. Uh, this is a PAD amendment tonight. This is the subject property here. Uh, this is Pebble Creek. This is Virginia. Uh, the property here is about five acres. Uh, the aerial doesn't show it, but it is developed with an existing assisted living facility right now, this parcel here. Uh, surrounding it, we have to the west, uh, Pebble Creek. To the east, we have the Rio Paseo neighborhood. Uh, to the north is another parcel. This is zoned for court homes. This parcel was originally one parcel. Uh, this was subdivided off, developed with the assisted living facility. Uh, this parcel remains designated for court home development. Uh, 2003, the Goodyear Plan Regional Center PAD was amended to go from court homes to the assisted living facility. And in 2013, what we had was a PAD amendment application. And in that application, the text referenced a north setback, building setback of 55 feet. Uh, however, the site plan included with the PAD amendment application showed a setback of 35 feet. Mm -hmm. And to this date, the 35 feet was the correct number. However, the incorrect number, the 55 feet, made it into the ordinance. Uh, the applicant discovered this in preparing a property survey. Uh, they saw that it was a 55-foot north building setback referenced in the ordinance. They alerted us. We said, okay, let's process a PED amendment will make it 35 feet, which is what was intended and which is what the facility was built to. Uh, we did have a public hearing before the Planning and Zoning Commission June 15th. Uh, no one from the public uh, voiced any opposition to this application. Uh, we did advertise as for a public hearing 500 feet. Uh, to date, staff has not received any public opposition to this PED amendment. Um, as such, Mayor, we are recommending approval of this PAD amendment to correct that error from the 55 feet to the correct 35 feet. Uh, staff and the applicant are available for questions. Thank you very much. Are there any speaker cards? No, Mayor. Would anybody in the audience like to speak? All right, will the city clerk close the public hearing? Will the city clerk please read ordinance 16-1335 by title only, please? 
Adopt ordinance number 16-1335, approving an amendment to the Goodyear Planned Regional Center Planned Area Development, Parcel A of Pad Parcel 12, for the Goodyear Assisted Living Residence, generally located at the northeast corner of Pebble Creek Parkway and Virginia Avenue, to revise the north building setback from 55 feet to 35 feet, adopting supplementary zoning map number 16-03A, providing for severability and providing for an effective date. Thank you. Could I have a motion a second? So moved. Second. I heard a motion by Vice Mayor Loretano, a second by Councilman uh, Osborne. <laughs> Open for council discussion. Councilman Stipp. I kind of have a generic question probably for the attorney. Is there a way for that this almost seems like a Scrivener's error in this? I don't know if that falls under the legal definition or not. Is there a way that we can build this into our ordinance language that allows us to be fixed without dragging an applicant and everybody through this whole process to fix a technical error like this? Hey, Madam Mayor, members of the council, when we do see these sort of things, if it is appropriate for a scrivener's error, we usually make those changes administratively. This, since this one lies in the ordinance, you probably need to make the adjustment, so this is the appropriate. Yeah, no, I just was wondering for the future if there was a way to you know, take a boilerplate look at language to throw in there to kind of cover these for the future. Because I would just hate to drag this out for any of our businesses that are looking to take some action. I don't know when they discovered this and how long they've been waiting, but if we're causing them delay, then we're government's getting in the way. So it's just food for thought, but I'm all for it. Okay, so uh, it's, discussion is finished. Could I have a roll call vote, please? Councilmember Homan? Aye. Vice Mayor Lortano? Aye. Councilmember Osborne? Aye. Councilmember Pazillo? Aye. Councilmember Stipp? Aye. Mayor Lord? Aye. Passes 6 0. Okay, great. Um, the next item on business is to consider amending Articles 2 4 2 and 2 4 9 of the Goodyear City Code and the City of Goodyear Rules Procedure. Maureen Scott, City Clerk, to present. Good evening, Mayor Lord and Council Members. Good evening. This item before you is to consider adopting the revised Council Rules of Procedure. And the Rules of Procedure is a standard policy to identify rules and procedures to conduct the Council meetings. And Council initially adopted the City Council Rules of Procedure in August of 2000. And at the same time, they adopted the Open Meeting Law Handbook. And the Rules of Procedure was updated again in February of 2006. So while reviewing both of these documents, duplicated information was identified. The information in the Open Meeting Law Handbook has been added to the Rules of Procedure. And you'll notice the red and the blue items added in the revised handbook that you did get. That is all actually from the handbook, the Open Meeting Law Handbook. Staff also reviewed the agenda formats to make sure all documents were consistent. And the agenda formats are listed in the city code. And that's why that we have to update the code. Oops. So in summary, staff is recommending to combine the open meeting law handbook information with the rules of procedure and also to updating city code to make it consistent with our agenda formats. And that concludes my presentation. I'm available for any questions you may have. Are there uh, any speaker cards? No, Mayor. I didn't think there would be. Would anybody in the audience like to speak? <laughs> Wasn't that astute of me? Wasn't I quick on that one? I thought so, too. So are you going to read from there? Yes, so, ma'am. Okay, since there aren't any speaker cards, will the city clerk please read resolution 16-1763 by title only, please. Adopt resolution number 16-1763, amending and adopting the City of Goodyear, Arizona, Rules of Procedure, previously adopted by Resolution 00-740 and declaring as a public record that certain document filed with the city clerk entitled City of Goodyear, Arizona Rules of Procedure. Thank you. Could I have a motion and a second, please? I move. Second. I had a motion by uh, Councilman Osborne and a second by Councilman Holman. Open for council discussion. Councilman Bazillo. Just a general comment. This is more administrative cleanup than is anything else, correct? Yes, Councilman. Okay, Bazzillo. thank you. The other? Okay, roll call vote, please. Vice Mayor Loretano? Aye. 
Council Member Osborne? Aye. Council Member Pizzillo? Aye. Council Member Stipp? Aye. Council Member Homan? Aye. Mayor Lord? Aye. Passes 6 0. Thank you. Will the city clerk please read ordinance 16 1330 by Tyler only? Adopt ordinance number 16 1330, amending Article 2 4 2 of the Goodyear City Code relating to regular meetings and amending Article 2 4 9 of Chapter 2 of the Goodyear City Code relating to agenda, order of business, providing a severability clause, providing for repeal of conflicting or inconsistent ordinances, rules and regulations, providing a penalty, and providing for an effective date. Thank you. Can I have a motion a second? So moved. Second. I heard a uh, motion by Councilman Holman and a second by Councilman Lord. Uh, I just want to call you that tonight. Osborne. Uh, open for council discussion. No discussion. Roll call vote, please. Council <clears throat> Member Osborne? Aye. Council Member Pizzillo? Aye. Council Member Stipp? Aye. Council Member Holman? Aye. Vice Mayor Lortano? Aye. Mayor Lord? Aye. Passes 6 0. Great, thank you. That was that was tough double duty, double duty there. So thank Multi, you. Multitasking. I'm going to give you a moment to get back to your chair before we go. We're at 7.4. Uh, it's a business item to consider amending and restating Goodyear Volunteer Re and Reserve Firefighter. Retirement Trust Alternate Pension and Benefits Plan. Doug Sandstrom, Finance Director, will be presenting. Doug, welcome. Mayor, members of the Council, the item before you is a resolution adopting and re the amended and restated Goodyear Volunteer Reserve Firefighter Trust Pension Benefit Plan, here and after I'll call the plan. Um, this plan was created in 1990 to offer retirement benefits to our firefighters, all of whom were either volunteer or reserve at that point of time. In 1994, we had our first full-time firefighter positions, and when we started going to a full-time fire force, they were covered under the Public Safety Retirement Plan. So we started to gradually phase out of the uh, volunteer service. In 1999, our last year that reserves were utilized. Um, so the plan currently, as it stands, covers only those former volunteer and reserve firefighters. There are currently six members the plan has total assets of approximately $400,000. It's a defined contribution plan. There will never be any new members in the plan, and the plan assets, as it stands today, cannot easily be rolled into an IRA plan, which is why we're going to continue with the plan. The changes being proposed have been reviewed by and unanimous, unanimously approved by the board. It removes all references to active firefighters as the plan only covers those who are retired and eligible that were reserve and volunteers. Um, changes the governance of the plan from uh, mayor appointed position, which is currently council member Stipp, the fire chief, a lay person, and four firefighters to governance by three members of the board. The plan will automatically terminate once there are less than three members participating and the city will continue to provide administrative services, such as uh, posting agendas, taking minutes, providing meeting space, and so on. It basically will turn all the governance of the plan over to the members. And with that, I'll open it up for any questions. Thank you very much. Are there any speaker cards? No, Mayor. Would anybody in the audience like to speak? All right, will the city clerk please read resolution 16-1771 by title only, please. Adopt res resolution number 16-1771, approving the amended and restated Goodyear Volunteer and Reserve Firefighter Alternate Pension and Benefit Plan. Thank you. Can I have a motion and a second? So moved. Second. I heard a, um, a motion by Councilman Stiff and a second by Councilman Osborne. Open for council discussion, I'm sure. Councilman Stiff. Well, I just... Um, as the mayor's designee for for this, this is um, this is really essential for this to go forward. Um, the the bylaws that were made, um, the the board itself has to hire an an outside attorney to function uh, to, to to clean these up for us. Got everything uh, underway. It takes the city really out of the, the liability and out of the loop on this. The members that, that remain are fully supportive. I think the presentation that Doug talked about, uh, unanimous support by the board. Uh, we've been working on this, I think, for like not, not quite six months, but February. No, well, almost. <laughs> um, so this has uh, kind of come to a long standing. Um, it does not negatively affect 
uh, these people who volunteered for the city a number of years ago as firefighters. Um, and it, it's just a, it's a, this is a win-win. Great, thank you. Any other comments? Well, Bill, thank you for your work. We greatly appreciate it. So roll call vote, please. Councilmember Pizzillo? Aye. Councilmember Stipp? Aye. Councilmember Holman? Aye. Vice Mayor Loritano? Aye. Councilmember Osborne? Aye. Mayor Lord? Aye. Passes 6 0. Thank you. We're at 7.5, the business to consider adopting property tax levies for the fiscal year 2016 17. And Lori Wigginroth, budget and research manager, is here to present. Wonderful. We're here for the last step in the FY17 budget process, which, of course, we actually started that budget a week or so ago. Um, as you recall, we've been through numerous public meetings, had presentations, uh, gone through the, many of the steps of the legal process that's required under state law. Uh, today, we're here specifically to address the property tax portion. As you know, on June 27th, you did adopt the budget. Um, but uh, according to state law, we have to go through the process of then having you do the property tax levy after the budget has been adopted. So I'll just go through a qu few quick facts about the property tax. As you know, some people like to talk about the levy and others like to talk about the rate. So we have both pieces of information here for you. Uh, next year's, or this, it's actually now this year's uh, proposed property tax levy is uh, combined at about $13.2 million dollars. The rate will be declining slightly to a combined rate of $1.86.23. Uh, and that has an impact of $186.23 on a home valued at $100,000. Our average home is valued in the neighborhood of about $170,000. Um, just to show you again the levy, uh, I think it was mentioned it earlier, in today, uh, earlier in the meeting this evening. Our combined levy is still below that of the peak in 2010, as well as the level in 2009. Uh, just to show you how the property tax used or how important it is to the budget, um, this shows you that there's $89.1 million in general fund revenues uh, that support the, uh, the ongoing budget of the city, those uh, salaries and uh, utilities for police services, fire services, park services. Uh, your your uh, your needs, uh, the needs of the administrative portion of the organization, and so the the primary property tax pays for eight is eight percent of the revenue that supports that budget. The secondary property tax is only to be levied to pay voter approved a debt service on voter approved bonds, and so this just shows you uh, kind of the debt uh, debt service requirements of the city, and that the secondary property tax is four point nine million of that uh, total. And with that, I'll answer any questions. Otherwise, we request that you approve uh, Ordinance 16-1334. Thank you. Are there any speaker cards? Would anybody in the audience like to speak? Then will the city clerk please read Ordinance 16-1334 by title only, please. Adopt Ordinance number 16-1334, levying upon the assessed valuation of the property within the city of Goodyear Subject to primary and secondary taxation, a certain sum upon each $100 of valuation sufficient to raise the amounts estimated to be required in the annual budget for the purpose of paying for various expenses, to raise the amount estimated to be received from other sources of revenues, providing funds for various bond redemptions, for the purpose of paying principal and interest upon bonded indebtedness, all for fiscal year ending the 30th day of June 2017. Thank you. Can I have a motion and a second? So moved. Second. I heard a motion by Councilman Pazillo and a second by Councilman Osborne. Open for council discussion. Councilman Pazillo. Uh, just a general question. Um, do you remember what the high was in fiscal year 910? 14000000 million? Seven? Does that sound about right? I believe it was $14.9 million, but I have that right here. Okay. Yeah, it was $14.9 million. Okay. The only reason why I'm, I, I ask is, you know me, I'm, I'm not a levy guy. I'm a levy guy, not a rate guy, because the rate's just a mathematical calculation. And the point I want to make sure it gets on the record is at 14.9, and our current total level is 13.1, roughly. 13.2. 13.2. So you're looking at 1.7? 1 1.7 1 million more. 1.7 million under what we were seven years ago in total collections and that includes all the new growth over the last seven years so to keep it all in perspective 
we're operating with a lot less as far as the property tax levy is concerned seven years ago, even with all the growth that's happened. So that's a, I just want to make sure that gets on the record because that's a significant amount of money that we still haven't gotten to from 910. So. Councilman Stipp. This will, uh, my, my vote to approve this tonight will appear contrary to some because I did not vote to support the budget, but I feel it's always appropriate each year I do that, that once the budget is approved, I have a responsibility to fund it. And this is a major funding portion of that. So I support my fellow council members' decision in approving the budget, and I am them obligated to fund it. So I will be in support of that. Thank you very much. Any other comments? Councilman Osborne. Just a, a question of curiosity. Um, and Councilmember Pazillo kind of uh, broached it a little bit. And you may not have this answer, and it's okay. You can give it to me later. Uh, in 2010, when we were at our peak. Why, why don't you put that uh, back on the, the slide? Well, it's, it's, this, it's not stated here, so that's why. Oh. So in 2010, at our highest peak um, to today, do you know how many um, homes, because we can't go by actual population, so we have to go by homes. What's the difference, um, you know, if there was 20,000 homes in 2010 to today? I don't know how many more homes there are. I'm, I'm sorry, curious. Councilwoman. I will have to get back yeah, to you with that fine. information. Thank you. I don't think we, we expected you to remember that. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> it was a curiosity question. Any other questions? All right, let's do a roll call. Councilmember Stipp? Aye. Councilmember Holman? Aye. Vice Mayor Loritano? Aye. Council Member Osborne? Aye. Council Member Pazillo? Aye. Mayor Lord? Aye. Pass the 6 0. Great. So this ends our uh, regular meeting, and we'll get to the information items in a moment. And then following this, we have a special meeting, all right? So, uh, Council, you have any comments or combination, anything you want to talk about tonight? No? I do. Yeah, Councilman Osborne. Thank you. I know quite a few of us attended the. Um, REI opening and July 4th, we had, you know, a pretty festive uh, last week, and that was very exciting, and having uh, our new um, partners of REI being in our town is wonderful. I just wanted to let you know, because I was at our NLC conference um, in uh, Kansas City, Missouri, and uh, there's a, you know, here we, we celebrate salsa, there is barbecue sauce. I mean, oh. Oh, my goodness, the, the aisles of barbecue sauce are incredible. But I just wanted to let you know of a couple of things that were very interesting that we discussed in the fair committee that I'm on, and that's the, the finance administration and intergovernmental relations. And just to let you know, um, some of the things that are happening at the federal level, one of which I'm sure that you guys have discussed as staff, I just don't recall it coming to us um, but that was, come December 1st, there's the change in overtime for, for um, your white-collar jobs, your administrative jobs, your salaried employees. That number is almost doubling. And it's quite interesting, and it was a big topic of discussion um, for all the cities that this is going to affect, because maybe not every city um, knew this, and didn't have it in their budgets. And so this was, there was quite a bit of discussion behind it. Um, the other thing was how the IRS is proposing a, a rule change of political subdivisions. And that can also affect us um, in, in different items where we talk about water districts and we talk about different fundings and how that will come into play. So, you know, um, the committee had said it was an overall federal overreach, it challenges the state sovereignty, it's using a sledgehammer rather than a scalpel. There was all kinds of discussion about that. Are you looking for a second or a third on that one? <laughs> so I'm just, I'm just telling you what just went curious. on in this committee. Um, and lastly, there was a lot of, uh, well, and actually this also came on the discussion of um, municipal bond um, issues and, and how, you know, municipal bond projects they would like pictures and stories again because we know that that's a um, interest-free uh, tax that really helps bonds for our, our cities. Um, and lastly, the GOP had put together a tax reform um, <laughs> proposal, and that was quite interesting to discuss. I did remind the presenter that he kept calling it a scheme, and I didn't appreciate that it was being called a scheme, regardless of <laughs> the fact 
that you like it or not. It was, it was just interesting discussion. So that was my update. Thank you very much. And I, uh, yes, Vice Mayor Loretano. I just want to say a thank you to Nathan and his staff for a wonderful 4th of July. I thought that was great. And also they, they brought a little mini pump track out to the park this weekend, and that was very nice. So I, I, I love seeing those events. And thank you for your staff and all their hard work. Uh, Councilmember Pazillo. And thank you for Thunderstruck within the uh, music <laughs> yes. uh, piece in there. I appreciate that. Did you just thank him for the music? Or the dancers? Uh, no. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> no, not the dancers. The music. Clear, I just want to clear that up. No, no, just the music. Georgia had moves. <laughs> Any other comments? I just want to say I'm sorry that Councilman Campbell couldn't be here this evening because she also went to the League, the League of National League of Cities. So, and she does have comments. So we'll hear her comments hopefully next week when she returns. So, uh, City Manager, do you have anything to report? Uh, Mayor, members of the council, a uh, couple of things. One is follow up on the uh, fire uh, location study. Uh, there were some questions as far as provide, uh, can there be geo mapping associated with that, or at a minimum, how are we looking at the concentric response times? So um, understand that. And then there was a question also as far as a consultant. Um, we'll get that out to council when that's known. Uh, we just got, as I said earlier, all the proposals uh, this in this past Friday, so we're going through those today. And in terms of follow-up, I'd like to get with Councilmember Osborne on some of the specifics that you that came out of uh, your uh, conference, and specifically, you know, one of those on the overtime, how that will it could impact us. And, and December first, it doesn't. On December first, yes. And uh, Mayor Council, I do have a, a couple of items for as far as general information. It was mentioned on the REI open house. And that one actually had barbecue there, Rudy's. Uh, you talked about barbecue earlier. And it was great. and The desserts were great. But the, the one thing I just really want to, and Mayor gave remarks here, and we had some of our council there as well. And I have to tell you, they very much appreciated that. Uh, we received a following email, a follow-up email uh, to that event, and that was from REI's Director of Operations, really thanking us for working with them and also being part of their open house. And I quote this from the email, you've all done so much to help us be here, ready to open and begin taking care of customers. It means a great deal to me that you took the time to connect with REI and, and the support of the co-op. I'm personally very happy to be here and enjoy working in Goodyear. May I suggest a name change to Great Year instead because of the warm welcome and wonderful partnership we've experienced here. So nice. uh, really heartfelt thanks from the, the leadership of REI. So uh, appreciate that. Um, the other, and, and I, this is um, really at the risk of uh, taking some of the thunder away from our, our police chief. But I have to tell you, he, um, he, he responded, he actually sent information to the police department this weekend in, in light of some of the things we've heard about. And, but the one thing I would point out, and, and Chief, this is, um, you shared it later this afternoon on the tremendous support that our Goodyear PD receives from our community related to the anti-police activities that re recently occurred. So specifically, and, and I know the police chief would love to talk about this in more detail, um, but on Friday, a police department had tables full of cookies, cakes, pizza, and a variety of other treats and items, which was delivered by both local businesses and residents. It's a powerful statement. Um, today, they received additional treats, flowers, cards, and a cash donation, and I know that was not directly to the police chief himself. <laughs> Chief Geyer received very supportive emails from residents. We had over 40,000 hits as of Sunday to Facebook page uh, when the police department put out a message that our thoughts and prayers went out to those in Dallas affected by the incident. Um, so really, it's an overwhelming display from our public, um, a lot of leadership from our police chief. I really want to recognize that. PD, they do make a difference. Um, and, and all of our public safety responders, for that matter, fire as well, keep our citizens and, and business communities safe. But I thought that was just something that yes. council ought to be aware of it when you get the outpouring of the uh, business community as well as the residents for the support of our, our folks. That calls uh, for a round of applause. Uh, 
Is that it? All right. Uh, Councilman Bazillo has something. Just for clarification, will we get, be getting a map showing the five, six, seven minute response time in an area that falls outside of that? Do we have the capability of doing that? Okay. We do. Thank you. Any other inquiries? All right. Uh, the next meeting will be a work session. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see you had a. No. Yeah, I know. He leans over. Yeah, yeah, he leans over. I'm sorry. Councilman Stipp. Are we going to publicly say goodbye? <laughs> yeah. oh. Rachel. Oh, I. Rachel, her last day is yeah, well, Friday. This is her last right. Monday with the then, city. Uh, I, I would like so. my assistant, who's leaving me, uh, so <laughs> I will point out I've had six to since a uh, six assistant since I've been on this. So yeah, I, I'm getting. You're right. I'm getting the feeling <laughs> there's something wrong here. I know. Uh, so, but I, I do, I, I appreciate you mentioning that. Go ahead, you can finish your statement. Yeah, just, um, Rachel's moving out of local government into the private sector, but um, having known Rachel before she came to the city of Goodyear and, and everything that she's done while she's here, um, we're going to miss her. I don't think she's going to be far, but uh, Rachel, I do appreciate everything you've done uh, for us here. Any other comments? Well, I want, of course, I want to thank her. I mean, she's been in, uh, such a great help for me. And, uh, you know, I really wanted to tell her to stay, but what can I say? You know, the, uh, you know outside, outside companies, you know what, how, what they do. They give a little bit more dollar bill, so I'm sure I couldn't talk her into staying here for anything. But anyway, she's been great, and it's really nice because uh, my assistant, Rachel, has been very good to the council. Uh, and very, and that it, that takes a lot of extra effort because I'm so needy. So, uh, I, I, so Rachel, hand, round of applause for you. And I, before we uh, call the special meeting, and I think I'm going to give you a break uh, for ten minutes uh, after after I call the meeting, okay? <clears throat> but I just want you to know that the council will be, will be on uh, vacation. Uh, from 719 to 821. So um, they'll be in and out probably. Some of them you won't see. The mayor you might see once in a while. But on the 22nd of August is a work session and a regular meeting. So I'm going to adjourn this meeting to, uh, to call the next meeting. This meeting is adjourned. Now I'd like to call to order a special agenda uh, meeting on Monday, July 11, 2016. We are all here.